Good noontide to everyone, and welcome to morning prayer here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in San Luis Obispo, California. Morning prayer today, if you have the service booklet for Wednesdays, the uh, form of morning prayer is morning prayer one. The form is from the Episcopal Church's Enriching Our Worship. So if you're an Episcopalian and have access to Enriching Our Worship, you can use that as well. Today, the church remembers John and Charles Wesley. And, um, uh, oh, let me get you prepared for the psalm. The psalm today is on page 727 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you have that with you. Page 727, Psalm 98. So that's the psalm that you can get prepared for. As I said, the church today remembers John and Charles Wesley, priests. John was the 15th and Charles the 18th child of Samuel Wesley, rector of Epworth, Lincolnshire, and his wife, Susanna. John was born June 17, 1703, and Charles December 18, 1707. Of the 19 Wesley siblings, only 10 lived to maturity. Under their mother's tutelage, all of the Wesley children were schooled each day in six-hour lessons, always begun and concluded with the singing of psalms. Their theological writings and sermons are still widely appreciated, but it is through their hymns, especially those of Charles, who wrote over 6,000 of them, that their religious experience and their Christian faith and life continue to affect the hearts of many. Both Wesleys were educated at Christ Church, Oxford, John later being elected a fellow of Lincoln College, where they gathered a few friends to join a holy club in strict adherence to the worship and discipline of the prayer book, and were thus given the name Methodists. John was ordained in 1728 and Charles in 1735. Both were profoundly attached to the doctrine and worship of the Church of England and deeply moved by and critical of the Church's neglect of the poor and remained so despite abusive opposition to their cause and methods. The two brothers went together to Georgia in 1735 John as a missionary of the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, and Charles as secretary to James Oglethorpe, the governor. Shortly after their return to England, they each experienced an inner conversion. On May 21, 1738, Pentecost, Charles, quote, felt the Spirit of God striving with his spirit till the, by degrees he chased away the darkness of unbelief, unquote. Three days later, at a meeting on May 24th in Alder Aldersgate Street in London with a group of Moravians, during a reading of Luther's preface of the Epistle to the Romans, John reco recorded, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone, for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. So that revival was born. The formal separation of the Methodists from the Church of England occurred after the deaths of the two brothers in London, Charles on March 29, 1788, and John on March 2, 1791. But John's uncanonical ordinations of elders for America, bitterly opposed by Charles, doubtless set the basis for it. Jesus said, if you would come after me, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us say together the invitatory psalm, Psalm 67. O God, be merciful to us and bless us. 
Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Our psalm set for today is Psalm 98 on page 727 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say it together. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Now for our readings. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt is departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <clears throat> Let us say together Canticle Q, a song of Christ's goodness. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy heal us. In your love and tenderness remake us. In your compassion bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven may your love prepare us. Reading from Luke's Gospel. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God 
and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and live from there. Wherever they do not welcome you as you are living, the, as you are living that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The reflection for today is a reading from the Journal of John Wesley for Wednesday, May 24th, 1738. I think it was about five this morning that I opened my testament on those words, there are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, even that you should be partakers of the divine nature. Just as I went out, I opened it again on those words, you are not far from the kingdom of God. In the afternoon, I was asked to go to St. Paul's. The anthem was, Out of the deep have I called unto you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. In the evening, I went very willingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone, for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. I began to pray with all my might for those who had in a more special manner dis despitefully used me and persecuted me. I then testified openly to all there what I now first felt in my heart, but it was not long before the enemy suggested, this cannot be faith, for where is thy joy? Then was I taught, then was I taught that peace and victory over sin are essential to faith in the captain of our salvation, but that as to the transports of joy that usually attend the beginning of it, especially in those who have mourned deeply, God sometimes giveth, sometimes withholdeth them according to the counsels of his own will. After my return home, I was much buffeted with temptations, but cried out and they fled away. They returned again and again. I was often lifted up, I, I, I as often, I as often, I as often lifted up my eyes, and he sent me help from his holy place. And herein I found in what the difference between this and my former state chiefly consisted. I was striving, yea, fighting with all my might under the law, as well as under grace. But then I was sometimes, if not often, conquered. Now I was always conqueror. The Wesleys were exceptional brothers. I didn't know their family was so big, um, but they were exceptional, and they did a lot of work here in the United States, um, and uh, their legacy of caring for the most marginalized in society, the poor, those in prison, uh, focus on, focusing on education for such people, uh, is still their legacy today. Maybe not as prominent, um, but you can still see you can still see their legacy but in this country in particular. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Give strength to those in our congregation and loved ones on the front lines. Bettina, Grace, Kate, Robin, Brad, Chris, Christopher, Craig, Jason Robert, Jim, Carl.
Carl Michael. Have compassion on those who have asked for our prayers. Dixie, Elizabeth and Joe, David Halfmeister, Sophia, Ogo, Ngozi and Joseph, Beverly, Dan Dowdy, Leanne Meinhold Keys, Francis Reedy, Barbara Rayborg, love it. Roxana, Katie Griffith, Gloria Ensberg, Rich and Jane Castle, Gail, Peggy, Jim Roth, Holly, Sue, Jim, and those suffering from COVID-19. Amy Frost, Richard Guthrie, Sharon Chase, William, Abby, Stephen and Walker, David Gibbs, and those persons whom the, peop whom the people now name. And look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Bless the St. Stephen's family and those in the parish cycle of prayer, Eric Fisher and Catherine Marshall, George Gorindo, Grady Ahan, Lawrence and Kathleen Pennington, Liz Frost, Michael Carroll, Jane Alderman. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Have mercy on those who have died and those who love them. Lee Grubman, Charles Keynes, Donald Hickson, Jack Brill, John McCoy, Stephen Bolanga, and the over 510,000 Americans who have lost their lives to COVID-19, and those persons whom the congregation now names. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Lord God, you inspired your servants, John and Charles Wesley, with burning zeal for the sanctification of souls and endowed them with the eloquence in speech and song. Kindle such fervor in your church, we entreat you, that those whose faith has cooled may be warmed, and those who have not known Christ may turn to him and be saved. Whose lives, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>